My name is Nigel Blake and what I'm going to do today is walk you through the preparation, cleaning and eventually the sealing of a block paved driveway. Now, as you can see, the area at the front here has been freshly laid within the last six, eight weeks. The area behind is 15 years old. So it may not look it, but actually the blocks are the same type of paver. So what we're looking to achieve here is obviously to, to get one to match the other as, as close as possible. But also I'd like to point out, as you can see, during a 15 year period, there's been a lot of surface uh, degradation of the actual paver itself. Now, this would have been caused by obviously uh, use, um, but also regular pressure washing. Remember, every time the drive is kind of pressure washed, it's the equivalent of five years, 10 years exposure to the elements and wear and tear. So what we're looking to achieve here is to get the drive and the block paving as clean as possible once, and then properly protected with uh, a sealer so that no further uh, degradation to the color and, and the actual surface of the block occurs. So. As you can see from this area, this is where the vehicles are normally sit and the surface of the blocks is generally in far better condition as opposed to the ones which are regularly trafficked and also this surface aggregate, very prevalent where the vehicles have been running, is not so apparent here. So again, the purpose of the project here is to stop further deterioration of the surface. Again, on the areas of the black and the algae, uh, I'm going to apply a pre-treatment just to make the uh, cleaning process easier and more efficient. So to uh, clean these areas of algae and lichens as effectively as possible, we're looking to apply some of the Drive Clean Extreme product. Um, this will one, enable the uh, driveway to be cleaned at a lot lower pressure, which is important to protect the blocks, but also it will kill off those organisms so that they, it becomes far cleaner, far easier. So whether your uh, paving is, the, is a brick type paver or more an antique type paver, really the principles of the, the cleaning, the, the, the preparation and the sealing, they don't really change. The thing to remember is that your pavers, regardless of design, are laid onto a two inch bed of sand. Now during that cleaning process, regardless of the type of pressure washer being used, you're pumping a lot of water into that surface. And before you can apply your sealing products, that, that moisture needs to get out. So for example, on, on this driveway here that we cleaned, uh, we've now left this nearly a week before coming back to carry out the next part of the process, the sanding and the sealing. The important thing to remember when you're cleaning the paving is it's, it's pretty easy to generally get the surface of the blocks uh, clean, but it's the joints that's very important. Um, you know, over time, what started off as nice clean sand has turned to mud. Um, as you can see here, most of the joints are clean, but a few of them still have some muck left in place. Now, uh, the sealers will do an excellent job of solidifying the sand and sealing the sand, but what they can't do is they can't seal mud, uh, particularly damp mud. So before we start our sanding process, I always spend a little bit of time walking over the surface and any areas where I see muck in the joints, just basically scrape it out from there. Just about finished the sanding part of the process. A couple of things to watch out for. Avoid leaving any sand on the surface of the blocks and make sure 
your joints are properly filled with no voids. Now, when it comes to the paving itself, whether it's this type of antique paver or this type of brick type paver, they've pretty much all got a 40 mil at depth. When we're re-sanding, when we're cleaning properly, most of that is going to be filled with fresh sand. When it comes to sealing, what we we're looking to do is saturate those joints, really get the sealer deep into the block and the sand and set those joints rock solid. If you see this sample here, you really struggle to push any kind of object in the joints. They're really well sealed. As you can see, a secondary benefit is that the sealer itself really brings the block to life and enhances the natural colours. Now when it comes to coverage ratios, what you can't do is just spread the sealer too thin. If you spread it too thin, you're going to achieve very little and probably in a few months time um, wish you hadn't spent the money at all. Now to give you an idea, when I'm using this type of product, I'm looking to basically apply at a ratio of about two square meters per litre and on a stone such as this, slightly less. What that is going to enable me to do is really soak the sand deeply into the joints and stabilize not only the sand but also the block as well and reduce that future maintenance. If I'm a professional contractor, I might well be in investing in quite an expensive uh, spray unit. You need a certain type of spray unit to handle the nature of the materials and also the viscosity. But as a kind of one-off or, or, or infrequent kind of job, then a standard roller kit combined with a scuttle or a roller tray is absolutely fine to do an excellent job. Whenever I'm doing this kind of work, using these kind of materials, I'm making sure that I'm wearing a suitable uh, vapour mask, decent pair of gloves, boots, over trousers, and if I'm ever using a sprayer, always a pair of goggles. You never know when a hose could burst, something untoward could happen. Always make sure you're wearing the goggles. Now, in terms of using the roller, most important thing to remember is just to let it gently glide across the surface of the blocks. Avoid putting any pressure on there that could draw the sand out. Uh, effectively, if you think of yourself as just literally holding the roller in two fingers, that's absolutely perfect. And make sure that there's plenty of sealer on the roller as you're working, effectively creating a kind of tidal wave in front of you. This will ensure that the sealer is penetrating deep into the sand. And when it comes to the sprayer, again, to ensure that I get enough sealer penetrating deeply into the blocks, I'm effectively letting the sealer puddle in front of me, creating you know, what you, to the point where you think, oh no, I've put too much on, but as you'll see in the footage, it very quickly soaks in. Again, that's ensuring that we get the sealer penetrating deep enough into the sand and into the blocks itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is just demonstrate on a small area here, um, how to apply the sealer correctly at basically the right ratios. So as you can see there, Basically, all the sand has changed colour. There's still a residue of sealer sitting on the uh, sand now, sort of 20 seconds later, but that will quickly penetrate in. Now, what I'm looking to avoid is say that's at a ratio on this type of block of just under two square metres per litre. Next, I'll demonstrate how not to apply that first coat of sealer. So if we look at the second part of that demonstration, uh, visually, you know, the two areas look pretty much the same. But the big difference is here, I'm working at that kind of ratio, as I say, around two square meters per litre. Over this side, I could easily be covering six, eight, even eight square meters per litre. But applying the sealer that sparingly is basically going to achieve very little. Now, firstly here, working with the roller, I'm going to do a small area showing how to apply the product correctly. Now 
And now we're going to do another small area where it's so like showing you what to avoid, basically too little sealer on the roller itself. As you can see there, yes, the, the surface of the uh, colour of the blocks has changed, but the sand in most places is still the same. Um, and I was very much in danger there of starting to drag the sand out of the joints. Whereas on this side, where it's been applied correctly, you can see all the sands changed colour and, and the sand has now, um, if anything, congealed a little bit further down. So um, certainly avoid this method of application. You're going to achieve very little. So just to give an idea on how much product we should be using, I'm just going to take some rough measurements. Now working this way, which is one of the wider points of the drive, we've got roughly nine metres here. If I look at the vertical measurement, and to the main body of the drive, we've got six metres here. Um, so roughly around 54 square metres at this point. If we now measure the additional area at the front. So this measurement here is five metres. Another four metres this way, so another 20 metres in total. So we've now got 74 square metres plus a path of about 10 metres, roughly 85 square metres in total. So it doesn't have to be absolutely precise, but on a driveway and path of this size, roughly 85 square metres, I'd be looking to order 75 litres of sealer, three drums of sealer, of which I'm using basically one and two thirds on the first coat and just one and a third on the second coat. That's going to roughly give me the right levels of coverage. And as I say, you're always going to use a lot less sealer on your second coat. So we're at the end of the job now. We've applied our two coats of sealer. Our sand is hardening off nicely and the blocks are protected. Now the application of the sealer will help minimize maintenance, reduce the color loss from ultraviolet light and, and basically protect the blocks from further wear. But if you're looking to get the maximum benefit from the work that's being carried out, then a little bit of routine maintenance now and again makes sense. With all forms of block paving, you've got the joints in the sand. Now, you cannot basically fill these joints any further because of the beveled edge, but left unprotected, the muck will start to build up. So it makes sense just a couple of times a year just to take a broom and sweep your driveway clean. Don't let the muck build up in the joints and occasionally just put a light kind of biocide um, over them just to stop any moss and algae beginning again to establish themselves in the joints. That's the best way to get the maximum protection from not only the uh, elements but also potential weed growth as well.